Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam hormat semuanya. Saya bersama dengan Cik Serenit Norman pada malam ini. Kita akan uh, mengadakan borak-borak multidimensi. Dan sebenarnya saya nak pasang lagu um, kita ada cover song. <laughs> kita ada cover song. Uh, Serenit Norman dan saya ini merupakan kelas uh, kawan sekelas, kawan sekolah. Sejak dah, sejak sekolah rendah sebenarnya. Dan uh, saya fikir bila kita bercakap tentang mati dimensi, kalau minggu lepas dengan Profesor Fatimah Kari bercakap tentang um, kemiskinan daripada pelbagai dimensi, uh, perlu untuk lihat bentuk-bentuk uh, uh, penghindaran, uh, terhindar daripada akses kesihatan, terhindar daripada akses kewangan, maka hari ini lebih penting lagi kerana merupakan World Autism Day Maka saya nak mulakan sebelum kita jemput uh, Cik Serenit Norman Saya nak mulakan dengan menjemput uh, ataupun memberi satu panggilan, membuat satu panggilan uh, Kepada Wakil Majlis Belia Malaysia Kerana Majlis Belia Malaysia, this is a shout out, telah mengajak kita uh, Dengan kempen Semarak Biru Autism ya, Jadi kita pakai biru uh, sempena hari ini untuk anak-anak istimewa khususnya dalam uh, within the uh, autism spectrum. Saya telefon ya, eh, uh, Encik Faiz Shuhaimi. Let's see if he picks up. If not, uh, maybe admin can can add on Serenit terus. I don't see her. I'm here. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Ah, uh, saya Nurul Izzah. Ahli Parlimen Perumah Tampau. Nurut Iza, Ahli Parlimen Permatang Pau. Ya, yeah, selain Encik Faiz, uh, oh. saya nak maklum hari ini kita buat Facebook Live. Uh, kita nak uh, mengucapkan terima kasih kerana Majlis Belia Malaysia telah mengadakan kempen Semarak Biru, ya, yeah, Autism. Ya, yeah, dan dan saya nak tanya, um, sempena Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan, Apakah jabatan utama yang MBM hadapi dengan membantu anak-anak istimewa dan apakah mungkin message uh, saudara Faiz sebelum kita mula program kita mahu berikan uh, kepada pendengar uh, Facebook Live kami? Kira message utama daripada MBM, yes. Kejap eh. Silakan, kempen laksanakan untuk ah, Kempen ini kita laksanakan untuk uh, Kita bekerjasama dengan Persatuan Autism Malaysia Persatuan uh, Autism Malaysia Persatuan uh, Autism Malaysia uh, Untuk kita memberi penerangan kepada masyarakat Kita dengan uh, apa tu, uh, apa kaitan autism Dan pada masa yang sama uh, Kita juga bekerjasama dengan Persatuan uh, Autism Malaysia uh, Untuk uh, mengedarkan bantuan makanan makanan alhamdulillah uh, kepada uh, kepada kuasa-kuasa uh, OPU daripada uh, autism yang uh, terus terjejas dalam terus terjejas ya keluarga uh, yang terjejas dalam ini ya 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 terima kasih jadi uh, jadi saya saya akan minta uh, semua orang semua pendengar penonton yang uh, menonton pada malam ini supaya dapat membantu usaha baik MBM Majlis Belia Malaysia dalam meneruskan penyaluran uh, khusus kepada keluarga-keluarga OKU ya, yang berkelainan upaya, anak-anak istimewa dalam tempoh PKP ini. Baik, terima kasih Encik Faiz. Semoga diberkati. Kirim salam pada semua di MBM. Okay, jangan lupa pakai biru. Semarak biru. Okay. Alright. Um, jadi uh, semuanya sekali lagi saya ucapkan terima kasih. Saya amat um, apa teruja malam ini kerana jarang sekali ya kita dapat bercakap dengan seorang pakar yang punya EVC yang sama kita benar-benar uh, dipertemukan lagi beliau uh, Cik Sarenit kita ni dia 18 tahun di United Kingdom <laughs> selepas kami habis SPM dia pergi UK dan dia mendapatkan ijazah dalam bidang fisioterapi ya yeah. dan sudah tentu menggunakan juga um, Uh, some psychology in the treatment ya yeah, dalam membantu uh, anak-anak istimewa dan saya kenal beliau keluarga khususnya uh, ibu beliau Puan Elahi Norman dan Allahyarham ayah beliau uh, Encik Norman yang saya fikir semua orang 
uh, amat amat kasihi dan uh, di situlah saya apa tu belajar tentang anak-anak istimewa uh, semasa yang mengandungkan Safia dan Harith pergi ke Tas Putra Perkim. Jadi one of the more consistent themes in my life adalah semangat istiqamah Puan Elahi keluarga sebenarnya untuk menjaga dan memastikan institusi Tas Putra Perkim berdiri teguh supaya anak-anak istimewa dapat diberikan dokongan uh, dan ibu serta ayah mereka dapatlah uh, berteduh sebentar uh, as a daycare center. Jadi um, setentu ianya bukan mudah. Uh, mungkin saya nak mulakan ya. Sempena World Autism Day, we talk about children within the spectrum. Ya kita bercakap tentang multidimensi, tema yang sama. Multidimensi ini mempamerkan setiap anak-anak itu unik. Ya jadi dia ada pelbagai dimensi kepada hubungan ayah dan ibu bersama anaknya. Uh, ada pelbagai dimensi dari segi keperluan anak-anak dan sudah tentu hari ini kita nak tekankan kasih sayang and you know uh, saya uh, nak pasang lagu tak tahu lah admin sempat tadi kerana lagu masa kami muda-muda dulu <laughs> lagu Beastie Boys uh, Intergalactic uh, dan ada satu frasa yang mengatakan another dimension, another dimension <laughs> dimensi ini merupakan sesuatu yang saya fikir memberikan lebih banyak apa kekayaan dalam hidup kita Maka Serenade, ya, yeah, uh, tell me, kenapa nak pulang ke Malaysia, kenapa begitu committed untuk bersama uh, meneruskan perjuangan Tas Putra, uh, memberikan kasih sayang dan dokongan kepada anak-anak istimewa, khususnya anak-anak dalam spektrum uh, autism. Okay, Assalamualaikum. That was a really nice intro. Terima kasih sebab, uh, untuk introduksi itu. Memang... Um, saya berada di England 18 tahun tapi coming back has been such a wonderful experience dan saya amat bertuah dapat balik ke Malaysia. It's not just any country and it's my <laughs> Panai Kur and it's it's been lovely and I feel privileged to actually be here to share some of my experiences. Alhamdulillah. So bekerja dengan anak-anak yang kurang upaya, um, ada pelbagai dekat Tas Putra Perkim, um, we have so many different types of children. We have children with cerebral palsy, uh, genetic problems, and children on the autism spectrum. And for today, with being the autism day, you know, Sadara YB is she asked me, can I, can we do this? I'm like, yeah, sure, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a little bit ad hoc, but I'm like, yeah, I would love to speak. So I'm a, um, I feel very, very passionate about speaking to the parents, you know, any Malaysians, Malay, Chinese, Indians. So, how do I help people who are having children who are on the autistic autistic spectrum? A lot of the times when the parents come, selalunya bila kita berjumpa dengan ibu bapa yang ada anak-anak dalam spectrum um, autisma, mereka selalunya uh, berasa overwhelmed, uh, berasa yeah. tertekan, um, mereka masih perlu pergi bekerja untuk dapat you know, nafkah, tetapi mereka ada anak yang istimewa ini dan bagi kita dekat Tas Putra Perkim kami sangat we, we feel so it's, it's so important in our role to actually help the parents to understand what the condition is um, it's so many times bila kita berjumpa dengan anak-anak yang kurang upaya dalam spectrum autisma mereka selalunya autis um, cara autism mereka unik. So, tak ada dua anak yang sama atau teenager juga atau um, young, per, young adult. Dan bila, bila kita berjumpa dengan dia, the basic principle insight when we are meeting the new child or the new person mm. in Tess Putra Perkin is getting to know how their routine are at home. Routine eh? Jadual dia. Routine mereka amat important and especially during this MCO period InsyaAllah. Yeah, semasa perintah kawalan pergerakan ber, uh, berkuat kuasa. Okay. Yeah. Memang. Routine, kalau ada routine, ini um, masa yang sangat unik untuk kita lakukan routine atau to get to know your child um, by making a routine and it gives that great opportunity to get to know them. So I guess, what would it be? What could we do? Um, one of yeah. the things Yeah, what we could do is, um, you say when you wake up first thing in the morning, um, 
maybe they might have come to your room and they're knocking and they're not letting you sleep. You know, we, we, we try and wake up with a, a good feeling, rasa positive. Memang mungkin rasa macam, oh, banyak kerja yang perlu dia lakukan. Tekanan. Tekanan nak masak, uh, ramai anak-anak atau uh, keluarga dekat dalam yeah. bilik atau rumah yang kecil. Kita selalu um, katakan kepada ibu bapa, you know, have a place boleh, boleh makan sama-sama. So maybe yeah. some children or you can say, um, do you want to take the bread? Um, and actually just hold on and and maybe spread some jam ke, you know. And of course some parents might um, mungkin kata, anak saya tak boleh lakukan tu. And I was saying to Iza before, YB Iza, you know, aut- people on the autism spectrum are so vast. They might be mild, they might be moderate, they might be in the severe range. So it really depends. How can you gauge your child's ability, your ba- the basic ability to create the routine? Jadi maksudnya sebagai ibu atau ayah, setentu kita nak memaksimalkan potensi anak kita kan? Jadi yeah. apa pun adalah untuk membantu menyediakan persekitaran supaya potensi tersebut dapat dicapai. And the yeah. sky is the limit, right? Because I think as parents, kita kita sentiasa berusaha uh, di samping yeah. bertawakal. Tapi yeah. usaha itu seperti yang yang saya nak sebut, dia mengikut rutin dan yeah. dia uh, berterusan mengikut keperluan dan kesesuaian. Saya saya nak nak faham sedikit ya mungkin kepada semua pendengar. Contohnya bila kita bercakap tentang Uh, anak-anak istimewa khususnya yang di, dikatakan uh, in the the spectrum ya yeah. jadi mungkin deria mereka bagaimana mereka mendengar bagaimana mereka uh, merasakan uh, sesuatu persekitaran itu berlainan uh, dengan seseorang yang dikatakan tadi a, a typical uh, person ya yeah. jadi bagaimana kita nak cuba menyelami so kita boleh nampak dunia ni daripada pandangan anak atau mereka yang kita kasihi Okay, itu memang susah untuk um, to do it, to mengalami, to menyelami. Tetapi, there are a few ways. One of the ways is cara observa- observation, pemerhatian. Hmm. So, you may have already got to know your child. Tetapi, pada waktu PKP ni memang lain sikit. Sebab kita ada uh, masa. Tak ada tekanan yeah. macam, oh, kena pergi kerja, rushing, rushing, rushing. What hmm. must be, you can memerhatikan anak suka apa. So, mungkin dia ada um, rancangan yang dia suka atau ada beberapa uh, mainan, cara mainan yang dia suka. Sebagai um, contoh, ada satu anak ni yang dia suka bola pimpong. Bola pimpong ni dia suka jatuhkan dari tangga dan dia, dia turun one by one. Dan Melihat, ya. Yeah. Dia suka memahati pimpong ni jatuh, jatuh, jatuh. So, berkali-kali. Berkali-kali. So, apa yang kita selalu katakan kepada ibu bapa, jangan bagi dia sampai dia buat habit. Macam dia lari kepada habit tu dan escape. So, apa, what we can do instead is kami berikan mereka main, yes. And then, bila kamu merhati, you can have, kamu face anak kamu and buat eye contact supaya dia boleh lalui. Hmm nampak mata tu mata and you try and understand go okay mommy's going to play with you mom akan main dengan kamu and mm. when we, when you play say they suka buat you know repeat repeat sesuatu dalam autistic um, spectrum autism they love repetition mereka suka yeah let's see is after a few repetition you take the ball and you hold it bila kamu pegang bola tu for instance kamu kata mungkin ada sesuatu yang kita tengah belajar daripada speech therapy so we might go we point and we go ah or if they you want to teach them to say please so long you know or thank you mommy terima kasih mommy so those moments pada waktu waktu khusus tu kita boleh use it as a very unique time to learn and it's such mm. an amazing time we can change this whole pkp thing ke situasi yang positif tidak dapat masa seperti ini lagi yang kita boleh gunakan untuk betul-betul menyelami dan memahami anak-anak kita. So one of the ways I would say to answer the question is permahatian, eye contact and really quality time dalam persekitaran yang tidak ada banyak gangguan untuk even if it's 10 minutes to just watch your child 
mm. and care on the children, especially children who are on the autistic spectrum, is to try and to do it a few times a day at the same time of the day. It can be after breakfast or sebelum sarapan atau selepas atau sebelum zohor, selepas zohor, or even before maghrib. Before maghrib might be a nice time. You know, you might have the family preparing the dinner atau you have just prepared the dinner and then you might go say to your child, okay, come and sit. Mommy wants to show you how I cut the timon, for instance. You know, little things like that. It's about being creative and I'm really open to, you know, anyone wanting to ask questions after. So yeah, kita kita nak, nak tanya juga kan tadi uh, Serenit sebut tentang uh, jam, letak jam uh, di atas roti. Jadi yes. pemakanan, uh, adakah faktor kandungan makanan uh, gula yang diambil oleh mana-mana anak-anak kita akan menjadi satu pemangkin kepada tindakan yang lebih uh, positif atau sebaliknya. Mungkin boleh kongsi juga faktor makanan. Sebelum kita pergi, uh, the thrust of your strength iaitu physiotherapy. Yes. So one of the most important things actually is what YB has said, is the food. Faktor makanan, apa yang mereka, khasiat yang mereka makan dan faktor um, gula ni. So gula kalau seperti minuman, apa minuman yang mereka suka? Uh, hmm. Sebab contoh ada anak ni dekat Tasputra, bila dia masuk Tasputra, dia langsung tak boleh minum air yang clear. Air yang tulen. Air putih dia, lah. Air putih. Air putih. Yeah. Dia selalu mesti ada air oren atau air air ungu, you know, ribena. Air yang bergula. Air bergula. Dan kita bila memahati dia, se, sejurus selepas dia minum, dia intens sangat. Dia ber, menjerit, dia tarik, dia pukul anak-anak yang lain dan kita apabila kita bercakap dengan ibu bapa we were saying apa yang dia minum setiap hari and they mm. Milo and we're like ya Allah Milo has a lot of gula you might as well give the anak Coca-Cola we say mm. try and win off maknanya uh, keluarkan um, Milo daripada diet anak ni sedikit demi sedikit so macam mana kita kata sudu kecil tu yang dia letak uh, kurangkan sikit-sikit dan um, untuk the ex- the alternative yeah um, we put water with a little bit of honey and what we mm. did honey to um, gula asli we give yeah. a little Complex bit complex sugar exactly it's so important sebab kalau kita bagi mereka um, very high sugar mereka tak dapat gula putih ya yeah tak dapat mendengar, tak dapat duduk, tak dapat um, relax, tak dapat jadi tenang. Susah untuk mereka mm. sebab budak-budak dalam keadaan atau spectrum autisma, they react really quickly. And it's not just children on the autism spectrum. We see myself, you know, a typical person, anyone. Um, and Habislah that, kita kalau kita minum Coca-Cola. <laughs> or Milo, or Milo. So <laughs> yeah. really, you know, whether it's minuman atau jam atau, you know, yeah. makanan seperti um, curry puff nowadays, summertimes, they ada banyak gula. Sang, oh, uh, curry puff. Careful. Yeah, we have to be very careful. And um, please making sure that they have makanan yang seimbang. So, fruit, mm. sayur, protein mereka dan, you know, carbohydrate. Then, Anak ni yang saya um, cakap tentang dia suka Milo sangat, sekarang dia minum air dan dia ambil air dan dia mesti ada satu cawan air dengan makanan dia or after makan atau lepas dia punya uh, Masya video. Masya Allah. Video. Berapa lama tu saya ni sebelum dia boleh berubah uh, gaya hidup makan atau makanan? That is a very good question YB Iza because itu tak Kau jadi... Kau Iza Hafiz. Iza, okay. You, you banned me from school. <laughs> it, itu tak berlaku setah se, you know seminggu sebulan we have worked with this boy buat 7 bulan dan lepas insyaallah 8 bulan kita dapat tak kita it's so satisfying to see ya allah you know it was day on day there were days that kita rasa hmm. macam nak tarik rambut sendiri dan betul-betul kita we really respect the parents you know because it's very hard coming back from work and you want to just relax but you have a child yeah. 
is really, really active, wants to run around. I haven't seen mommy. How are you, mommy? In their own way. How are you, daddy? And you're Kadang-kadang mommy. dia rindu, kan? Dia nak, mama. dia nak attention, kan? Dia nak mama Kalang dan ayah at the phone. Spend time. Yeah. You know, they'll be like, we overreacting. So it's really we spend a lot of time with the ibu bapa. Kita betul-betul ada connection dan komunikasi dengan ibu bapa. Dekat Tas Putra, kita memang, we're a now a daycare training center. We spend a yeah. lot of time with the parents. Kita duduk dan apa-apa soalan, kita jawab. Lepas kita jawab semua soalan, mereka rasa macam mereka tahu apa kondisi, condition anak mereka. Alhamdulillah. Mereka. Lepas tu kita kata, okay, we now move into case management. Apa maksud case management? Itu maksud, okay. The parents, Pengenalian case. Uh. Ya, yeah, mengenali case atau management sebab anak satu anak akan ada speech therapy, occupational mm. therapy, physiotherapy dan kadang-kadang yeah. juga akan ada dietitian atau mm. nutritionist. So it's about getting to know that and the parents might go I really don't know. Saya betul-betul tak tahu kenapa anak saya macam ni. Dan kebanyakan case-case yang kita uh, berjumpa dengan dan bekerja dengan a lot of them is because mm. pemakanan dan tidur mereka tak ada rutin sebab itu terapi mereka tak sesuai atau oh, susah nak nak uh, mengenal menyelami. So this boy that we worked with, you know, after seven months hmm. he got the water. Dan water tu dia minum sikit-sikit saja, bukan bu. <laughs> But now we we see that dia dia yang nak pergi ambil. And alhamdulillah, you know, one of the Betul. other things is we can't force them. Kalau force habis. Jangan paksa. Tak boleh. Just like us, we cannot box the kita. We can't force ourselves to do certain things. We have to understand. We have to feel. We have to taste. We have to smell. We have to see, and we have to hear. And that is what we do with the children, inshallah. Inshallah. Saya um, nak tanya juga tentang kerana sebelum saya tanya tentang physiotherapy, eh, peranan physiotherapy. Uh, I remember I was I was looking at other um, account Instagram. See heart autism. Uh, yang dimiliki oleh Daniel Zain, uh, isteri dan anak-anak mereka, kawan kepada um, salah seorang uh, adik saya. Dan um, Daniel Zain kata dia dia mengusahakan beberapa bulan sehinggalah uh, anak beliau dalam uh, spektrum autism suka makan salad. <laughs> Data hari akan, itulah kegemaran dia kan. Jadi maksudnya bukan sahaja ibu, ayah pun kena Uh, menurut serta semua satu keluarga segerombolan makan sayur dan um, it's it's very heartwarming to see memang bukan mudah uh, saya fikir uh, hari dengan Sakia setakat ni uh, kong kangkung je lah kan favorite dia tapi <laughs> untuk salad ya Allah kena kena macam so it's uh, it's very inspiring uh, I like to see that and I think uh, dia pun sebut tentang elemen nutrisi dan makanan kepada uh, cara Uh, anak-anak mereka apa uh, akhirnya mempamerkan uh, beberapa attribut uh, dan atribusi. Uh, saya, uh, okay, so nak tanya uh, uh, Sarah ni, tell us tentang peranan physiotherapy. Saya dengar di Tas Putra Perkim ada hydrotherapy, ya, yeah, ada juga um, you know, special, special uh, equipments untuk memastikan yang tak boleh berdiri, uh, ya, yeah, yeah. dapat me- menggerakkan setiap otot dalam badan. Yeah. Jadi semua ini pada saya uh, harus dikongsi supaya orang dan kita sama-sama tahu apakah peranan fizioterapi dalam uh, memperbaiki uh, pergerakan dan mobiliti uh, setiap anak-anak. Is this anak-anak yang dalam spectrum? Yeah, maybe we'll start with that first, yeah. Then the rest you can add on, yeah. Peranan physiotherapy, um, most of the children that come, kebanyakan anak-anak yang datang dalam spectrum um, of in, keadaan physical neglect. Tak dengar sangat, sorry. Can you repeat that? Mungkin, can you hear me now? Ya. Yeah. Kebanyakan anak-anak autisme yang datang um, physiotherapy, mereka boleh jalan, boleh lari. Tetapi, one of the things that we find them, apa yang kita selalu memahatikan, Um, yang anak-anak yang kecil bawah enam tahun mereka tidak berduduk bersila mereka duduk dalam keadaan W ah, bila dalam uh, W maknanya W maknanya mereka punya kaki ke belakang 
bila mereka punya kaki ke belakang, peha dan um, tulang pinggul mereka akan work develop. Dengan, develop dengan keadaan yang mantap. So one of the things that we really do dengan anak-anak um, dalam spectrum autism is that we try and go over their milestones yang mm. mereka mungkin ter it, it, it lead maybe because of how they were growing up so we might go through crawling menyarap mm. menyarap boleh um, dalam bidang physiotherapy we really work on strengthening the shoulder then strengthening tulang pinggul mereka that means the hips area and we get them on the four point maknanya atas tangan dan lutut okay Okay. Try and get them to crawl. So we we do a game of merangkak. Askan merangkak. We do chasing or we pretend to be mm. dinosaur. Then kita <laughs> merang, we, we climb over things. Yeah. Uh, Isa hasn't seen me in work yet. <laughs> She I, I saw pictures. In the gym. <laughs> I've seen pictures. <laughs> so we do banyak merangkak. Then bila mereka merangkak, mungkin, um, you know, like my own adopted brother, bila dia mula Muhammad. Mula, Muhammad, bila dia mula-mula berjalan, dia pergi daripada keadaan baring terus ke kaki terus, uh, kaki lutut. Ah, jalan terus. How do you say lutut straight? Katih, katih lah. Ya. Yeah. Katih kan? It was on his hands, tetapi lutut dia tak uh, pegang lantai. Dia lurus. Oh. So, sebab tu dia punya um, hips were not strong. So, what we had to really work on is menyarap the crawling four point crawling and that's a big mm. one and then when they come to sit down kita selalu letak um, cermin depan mereka atau kita ada macam bulatan anak-anak yang lain mungkin tiga ke dua empat an- anak-anak dan kita duduk bersila dan kita main macam bola supaya so kita dia macam boleh tiru challenge dia ah role modeling tu besar dalam role, um, dalam you know teaching children with ADHD, autism. It's so interesting sebab mereka ada genius ni yang lebih daripada orang typical. And that's why we always find we're so like, wow, apa yang dia buat. Masya Amazing. So we never, never underestimate them. We try and treat them as best as we can or as best as we can try and see them develop. And it's beautiful sebab dia mereka macam bunga yang tengah blossom. Macam mana nak kata belakang? Memekar. Bunga yang sedang mekar. Ya, yeah, sedang, sedang mekar. Dan mereka bila, mereka, um, they get to meet the other children and they start talking in their own ways. It's amazing. They will be crawling together in physiotherapy. They will be sitting and, you know, playing things. And we go, now ada satu budak ni yang kita kata, duduk bersila. Dia, <laughs> then they can, you know, throw the ball and catch the ball. And then they yeah. might, you know, like a tight rope yang kita pull siapa yang lebih kuat, kita buat dalam... Kuat, yeah. Nah, tug of war. Kita, yes, tug of war. Tapi kita tug of war dalam keadaan duduk bersila. And this might be a oh. nice thing to do in time uh, PKP ni. You know, you do a game at home. You can do macam getah. Tarik tali. Yeah. And, and sitting down, they love it. They love it. It's... Uh, One of the things apa yang kita, saya, saya dapat tahu dalam physiotherapy is that you as a junior physiotherapist 18 years ago ya Allah. Got <laughs> it? Time time beastie boys. Yes. Beastie boys. I worked a lot with the older people. And then after we we you know specialize in working with older people and honoring orang yang you know tua dan jadi berumur warga kerap, emas ya yeah. warga uh, emas yang kerap jatuh atau sakit ya yeah, ya yeah, yeah. kita pergi yeah. uh, belajar tentang neurology orang-orang yang mungkin mm. stroke atau um, you know motor neuron disease semua condition yang agak autoimmune uh, disease ya yeah, agak you know merisaukan or but we learn mm. And after we went from there, we went to chess. So, buat masa sekarang ramai physiotherapy yang dalam, khus, um, you know, pakar chess, they will be so very important during this coronavirus time. Especially betul, after betul. people go through very um, bad lung condition problems because coronavirus is a respiratory, um, you know, pandemic. And 
you know, as a physiotherapist, it's really interesting. I really, really encourage, you know, Malaysian girls and Malaysian boys who want the creative and different things to get into. It's a beautiful thing. And, you know, I just happen to really like working with children. Then the Tasutra, like what Isa was saying, other than working on land, dalam darat, atas darat, kita juga masuk dalam air. Dan bila kita masuk dalam air, um, orang barat panggil ni hydrotherapy, ada yang panggil aquatherapy. Dan dalam air, sebab kita tak ada gravity, kita hmm. berada dengan buoyancy. Sebab things float. Benda-benda semua naik. So, anak-anak yang lebih berat atau yang yeah. rasa dia tak boleh bergerak betul-betul. Ada satu perkataan ini, they call it dyspraxia. So, children who are dyspraxic on the autism spectrum, kadang-kadang mereka sedikit uh, awkward. Awkward dalam bahasa Melayu? Uh, A little bit... Dia punya... Yelah, dia tak... Dia, dia tak, dia tak smooth lah tak dia. Smooth. Yeah. So dalam yeah. play, dia rasa macam ikan pula. And they will come up with different things. Graceful. Yeah. Ada satu budak ni, dia atas darat, dia tak boleh jalan. Tetapi Masya dalam Allah. air, dia boleh buat loop, dia boleh berenang air atas dan bawah. And he's beautiful. And that works on his keyakinan diri. Because dia hmm. sangat bagus. Dan dia rasa, dia tak boleh cakap lagi. We're working with a speech therapist at the moment. He's seven years old. And he now, in the water, we're doing, I happen to know some speech therapy because I'm a trans-dimensional um, therapist. We're doing therapy. Ah, ma, dia boleh cakap, dia boleh buat abu. Mm. Abu sekarang. In the water, wow. he can now sit on the yeah. tube. Now, because of that, he's able to go for um, hypotherapy. And what is hypotherapy? Hypotherapy is people who are able to sit on the horse and do therapy on the horse. And this is called hypotherapy. So that the Malaysia, Marika Pangi riding for the disabled, and they have different parts of KL that offer this. So Alhamdulillah, we have this. And this is something that you know they can do. There's all sorts of things. And I encourage you yeah. to visit these. Saya, saya, saya... Atas dasar itu kan uh, amat penting uh, kerana Tas Putra juga menjadi um, host atau tuan rumah kepada mana-mana sukarelawan ya yang mahu datang contohnya untuk bersama dengan anak-anak istimewa membacakan buku untuk mereka berpartisipasi dalam apa semasa dalam swimming pool ya, untuk uh, therapy hanya saya nak tahu sekarang ni dalam tempoh um, NCO tempo PKP sudah tentu ibu dan ayah tidak boleh hantar anak-anak untuk pergi terapi ke Tas Putra. Jadi dalam tempo ni apakah sebenarnya cabaran yang dihadapi yang hadapi oleh para ibu dan ayah di luar sana contoh kalau di Tas Putra you have a, you know a certified physiotherapist, you have a certified speech therapist, ada equipment tapi di rumah sudah tentu keadaan berlainan dari segi, um, you know, uh, of course saya percaya kasih ibu dan ayah itu dia ada dimensinya dan kekuatannya tersendiri. Tapi kita juga nak melebar luaskan, nak mewar-warkan cara-cara di mana masa yang mencabar ini insyaAllah dapat kita hadapi sekiranya kita bergongsi sedikit pengalaman dan juga amalan. So, um, daripada telefon call yang saya ada dengan semua ibu bapa, belum, some of the ibu bapa, some of the cabaran yang mereka hadapi is actually um, the routine. But routine. there's also positive. Uh, and what peluang. we find, ada peluang yang unique, you know. Cabaran mereka, um, apa yang mereka tak tahu, lakukan or you know that their parents what where they weren't there was during their working hours which is 9 yeah. to 5 p.m sekarang mereka ada dekat rumah so the cabaran is what do i do with my children that's the cabaran but actually the parents are the experts so i, I would never say i'm the expert of the child i love that i love that you said it saya, saya rasa semua kena dengar dan dan saya suka bila saya nak sebut Ibu dan ayah lah merupakan pakar tersembunyi kan? Yes. 
all they need are a little bit of tools. That's all. And I find that what, yeah. a few four telephone calls, it's been so lovely, Isa. I, I wish I could share every story, but I can't. It's so many. So <laughs> one of the stories is we actually have this child who was brain injured. He had a quiet brain injury and um, he was having physiotherapy in Kasputra. So one of the things we found is that the parents just didn't feel empowered. Mereka tak rasa macam mereka ada skill set. So saya kata sama ibu bapa, you know what? Use this as your kasih sayang time. You know, really full love to them. Hold your tender loving care. Let me just show you one, two or three exercises you can do with a child. Itu saja. And I said, don't worry about him doing new things. Just let him practice. Bagi dia practice apa yang dia boleh. Sikit-sikit. Don't force him. And what they were doing with this child is, um, Buddha, this particular child is learning how to merangka. So because <laughs> he's a quiet brain injury, Kusian, he's a, he's a year and a half. So he hasn't walked sure. yet. He hasn't merangka yet. But he's making very good, very good progress. progress. So the parents are working on trying to keep his right hand that keeps falling straight while he's in a maranka position and they're singing and they're playing with him. So this is one of the exercises. The other exercise is sitting down and they do the sila that mind. So about this little jato, it's about the brain injury, the bahagian kanan, tangan kanan dan bahagian badan kanan tak ada kekuatannya. So mereka exercise kedua mereka, he just sits down. I just talk to them. You just sit down with him. Cuba duduk bersila dan mak dan ayah duduk ke depan dan dekat belakang. So actually, the mom and dad are having such good quality time together working with the child. So they're building on their keyakinan and how to make their child feel the best. And the blood, the oxytocin, all the hormone, the love hormone will flow through. And that is what we don't have as strangers, as therapists, you know. So inshallah, you know, parents can make this most of the PKP. It's a special time. I mean, right now I'm feeling like I'm really getting to know my own brother who has learning needs. Then, memang susah, you know. Such a lovely, lovely boy. Yeah. Muhammad, if you guys know, plays like the best, the Godfather series songs, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, aduh, menyentuh yeah, perasaan kalau dia main piano tu. <laughs> dia memang gifted. The, the, bila dia boleh dengar. Yeah. Lagu dia yang dia akan main terus. I don't know yeah, how it's yeah. small kerja Allah. Tetapi bila matematik ke English ke reading, yeah. that's the hard part. But we find during this PKP period, wah, dia bangun pagi, dia ada rutin. Kita sudah buat rutin sikit. Dia bangun, dia boleh bersarap. Lepas tu, I go, okay, shall we do some reading today? <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, yeah. <laughs> like to read, you know? So uh, I I called your phone just now and then he answered and then Mr. Muhammad you know um I want to check your sugar intake. <laughs> so <laughs> dia memang dia selalu kata you know, every time I cakap dengan dia Muhammad makanan, makanan kena makan yang 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 healthy mm-hmm. kena jaga you know he he responds oh, very well mashallah. So he actually ingat kakak Iza said I cannot drink too much Milo. Um, yes, why Muhammad? <laughs> you know It's so no, not just that. Yeah. It's not just that. He he will he knows you know when I have my my moments. Kalau saya sedikit macam ialah sedih hari tu ada apa masalah. Dia sangat sensitive. Dia, he knows how I feel. Mm. So that's one of the things I yeah. love being around him. Uh, yeah, then saya nak tanya juga saya ni. Um, yeah. kerana sekarang ini memang ternyata lah uh, daripada um. Saya rasa bersyukur kerana bila membesar dengan your mom, Auntie Ellie yeah. dan of course all of you, kita benar-benar menyedari betapa pentingnya peranan non-governmental organizations, charitable organizations and centers such as Tapitas Putra memberi kesan kepada per, apa, perkembangan dan apa tu, how you improve the quality of life yes. for everyone. Yeah. Jadi kualiti hidup ini bukanlah terhad kepada beberapa segmen je dalam hidup kita dalam masyarakat kita. Jadi saya nak tekankan saya mungkin tak saya belajar sebenarnya banyak daripada uh, Tas Putra and of course your mom and of course all of you and, and I hope that ini memberikan kita peringatan untuk kita menghargai 
setiap uh, badan bukan kerajaan, non-governmental organisations di luar sana, di mana-mana. I'm sure there's one in Perak, there's in Johor, Matampau. Kerana inilah merupakan kuasa ketiga yang membantu um, menyelesaikan beberapa masalah di lapangan yang kadang-kadang hmm. tak dapat kena tak dapat diselit kan. Jadi it, you know I know it's not easy. Uh, saya ni kalau orang nak tahu you know her neighbor um, warga emas yang berumur bila saya ni ada masa walaupun letih dia akan pergi untuk memberi treatment untuk jiran jiran yang 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 uh, amat ber, amat berumur jadi pada saya amal jariah sebegini kan um, kita sama-samalah tingkatkan lebih-lebih lagi dalam keadaan kita dilanda um, pandemik yang sangat mencabar mencabar seluruh dunia yes. um, you know my my sisters in the US your brothers in the US yeah and uh, you know breaks my heart right thinking how far they are but as long as they are selamat kan saya bayangkan uh, dari segi ya yeah, setiap seorang daripada kita mahukan suasana dan yang selamat daripada wabak penyakit daripada segala musibah jadi mungkin di kala inilah uh, today and every day sebenarnya bukan saja kita nak menghargai para doktor or our frontline Uh, heroes and heroines, para bombanya, para polisnya and also our activists, our non-governmental organizations and all the workers on the ground dealing with people. So yeah. any last message from from you? Maybe insyaAllah we can do this next week depending kalau ada orang nak tanya soalan kan, kita pun nak, nak berkongsi. Cik saya nak buka puasa, rushing pula tu untuk dapatkan Slot ini, thank you. Okay. Tapi apakah message uh, daripada Serenade? You know, on behalf of Task Putra, I, you know, please, uh, if if everyone, um, you know, can help, can support, what are the ways to do so? You know, one of the things, uh, Isa, you just said, you know, is the people, uh, and it's the third part of, you know, building up a country or society. One of the things that I really learned, apa yang saya belajar daripada pandemik ni, ni, is that Malaysia is no different to other country. And it actually strengthened what I had in my mind about, you know, I, I was working in an NGO for a, a moment in, in UK. I worked in hospitals in the UK. And when I come back here, I find actually we are all the same. We always see the West as better and all that. But yeah. Yeah. We're all the same and we all have, you know, the people power. One of the beautiful things during this coronavirus time is that people have gone out there and I was just reading a newspaper, Mereka Kelua, you know, the Persatuan for the Blind and they're feeding people who are blind. They're looking for them. Where are they? You know, getting out to them and a lot of them are not able to tap into somewhere and they have been a bit lost and because this society this NGO has got some contacts, they're making this, they're having ownership. All of us have this tanggung jawab untuk, you know, macam mana rakyat kita, how is our jaran tetangga, how are we doing? You know, Isa mentioned about the, my neighbor, my neighbor just happened to fall and I was like, Ya Allah, you know, I'm not going physiotherapy at Tasputra, I might as well just go and, they're just yeah. my neighbor. I'm clean, I'm okay. If I'm actually coughing, you know, I'm there or I'm pakai. <laughs> I don't cough like this, cough like <laughs> So we're getting, and it's beautiful because I'm getting to know my neighbors. They're getting to know me. I'm teaching them to be able to help their grandfather. So in Malaysia, one of the greatest thing is kita amat ramah. We're so babudi, you know, we're, it's beautiful. And I say you, we use our strength to help, you know, move away from this pandemic and learn all the good lessons that we can. And it brings us together. Sure, there are things that is sad. And, you know, I was saying to Isa the other day, oh, susahnya, you know, I, I feel like I can't hear this news. Berita dekat Italy or dekat China, dekat America. Yeah. Memang, Atau dekat England sekarang, eh? Dekat England, PPE pun tak cukup. Absolutely. Untuk doktor guna pakai, ya. Yeah. Semua kawan-kawan saya dekat London macam rasa mereka dulu are untouchable. Tetapi negara tu pun kena. 
And you know, terkesan dengan serius. Terkesan. So we're all the same. We're all homo sapiens or neurotypical. Apa-apa manusia. Neurotypical. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And we all have a role to play in trying. It, we don't have to be leaders. We can be leaders in our own selves, and it's beautiful. I I thank Neuro and Isa. I mean Neuro Isa to give me this opportunity to share what I know, what little I know. But I hope that I can help, you know, parents, relatives, um, people in the community to be better understanding, better able, better empowered. Inshallah, I can speak better Malay as as well next time. Inshallah, little by little. So, saya saya juga fikir apa tu nilai kehebatan mana-mana bangsa terletak dengan cara kita melayan mereka yang paling paling tertinggi. So the measurement of how great our society yes uh, is is how we treat those who are most vulnerable. Absolutely. Uh, with that and on that note, Cik Serenit. Farang Norman, terima kasih. Adik Iza. <laughs> Kirim salam kepada ibu tercinta. Absolutely. Adik-adik yang tercinta Absolutely. di mana jua mereka berada. Allah. Moga Allah, moga Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sentiasa memberkati dan sehingga kita ketemu lagi. Happy Amin. World Autism Day. Assalamualaikum. Thank you Iza. <laughs> Bye. Bye.